Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about universal life insurance. So universal life insurance is a type of permanent life insurance that gives uh, policy owners the ability to adjust the premium, death benefit, and the cash value to meet their financial goals. Unlike the whole life insurance, the universal life does not have a structured premium requirement. So we learned before from the whole life insurance, uh, we know whole life insurance uh, has a fixed premium payment, which is you pay the same premium for the entire life of the policy. So uh, some people, because the premium is quite expensive for whole life insurance, some people may may not be able to pay the premium, you know, for entire so long time, you know, for their entire life. Then, you know, that's coming up this idea for universal life insurance, which is give you the flexibility to adjust the premium, then even adjust the death benefit if you no longer need that much death benefit, right? Or you want additional death benefit. So the as the policy will remain in force as long as the cash surrender value can support the monthly deductions for the mortality and the administrative expense. So just want to mention here, I mean, compared to the whole life insurance, uh, universal life insurance administrative cost is pretty high because, you know, there's so many variables they have to manage. So they definitely need more people uh, so, uh, to manage the thing. So administrative uh, expense is usually higher than the whole life insurance. Uh, if the cash surrender value is insufficient uh, to support the deductions, the policy owner is required to deposit additional premiums to avoid a policy lapse. So that's uh, something you need to know. Also, the universal life uh, policy owner does not have the ability to direct investment of the policy cash value. Uh, this is still compared to the variable life insurance. Uh, that's something because the universal life is a fix, it's not variable, so you cannot manage your own investment in the policy, then determine the cash balance of the universal life insurance policy at the end of the given period. So knowing the uh, balance of the account is important because, you know, if you, um, you know, if you are not paying sufficient the premium, the policy may lapse, right? So basically, they have this thing. I'm going to show you the, the graph here. So basically, set mortality charges based on insured age and the policy net, net amount at the risk. That's a mortality charge. Mortality charge here, you can see here. Then along with the policy administrative expense, then is expense are deducted from the premium due. So you can see if you deposit a premium, they're going to minus the mortality charge minus the uh, admin expense, right? So then you give your money in earn some interest, add interest on it, then equal to your cash value for the period one. You can see you can have a period one. Then your cash value on the period two is the cash value from the period one. Then you plus, uh, you deposit additional premium, right? Then less the mortality charges, uh, less the admin expense, then plus some interest that give you the period two cash value. So you can see, so your cash value is is the one in place as long as your cash value can you know cover the additional uh you know the mortality admin 
on cost, so you don't have to deposit the premium. However, if those mortality and admin charges higher, you have to deposit additional premium, right? So here's the example said Peter currently owns a universal life policy with an existing cash value. You can see the cash value only $600. So he has paid no more premium, $1,000. He paid this premium. However, he learned that the complete mortality and admin cost to main, maintain the premium are $1,900. You can see this, the cash value only $600. You even deposit one thousand dollar premium, you only is uh sixteen hundred, so you cannot cover their mortality and admin cost. So which is will require you to deposit additional three hundred dollar to keep the policy in force. So that's just uh, something keep in mind. Uh, for universal life insurance, you get the flexibility, but their cost may be high too. So yeah, that's something you need to know. So here I'm going to talk about uh, those two different options in the universal life insurance. And uh, so before we talk about that, what well, do you know? Uh, what is it called the net amount at risk, right? NAR. So net amount at risk, so is defined as the difference between the cash value and the death benefit. So net amount at risk is equal to death benefit minus cash value, right? Then you can see a death benefit is equal to net amount at risk plus cash value, right? Here, I'm going to talk about the option A. Option A calls the level death benefit option. Level death benefit option basically says the death benefit stays the same for the entire policy life, right? Um, so you can see if the death benefit stays the same, then your cash value usually, because cash value is usually increased uh, throughout the life, right? If a cash value increase, here you actually require the uh, death benefit in stay the same. Cash value increase, then your net, uh, your net amount at risk is decrease because this increase, this have to decrease, right? Decrease, uh, then keep the death benefit uh, stay the same, you can use this one. Well, this benefit stays the same, then the cash value is increasing. So you are let amount at risk is um, is decreasing. So you can see this picture here. This is your age, then this is uh, represent the net amount at risk, right? Net amount at risk, you can think about it. At the beginning, you have a little cash value. Then your death benefit is huge. Let's say you have a hundred thousand dollar uh, cash value, and your policy death benefit is a million. So then your net amount of risk is nine hundred thousand, right? So then you know throughout the life, you're gonna pay more premiums, accumulate more cash value. So your cash value, let's say, increase to five hundred thousand dollar. So your death benefit stay at a minimum. So your net amount at risk will decrease to sir, uh, five hundred thousand dollar, right? So that's will tell you, uh, if option A, your death benefit stay the same, uh, which means your net amount uh decrease as cash value increase, right? Then option B here says is increasing death benefit option. Increasing uh, death benefit. You can see here the death benefit. Here, um, they would tell you the net amount at risk will stay constant 
when the net amount at risk stay constant, then your cash value increase. As cash value increase, your death benefit will increase as well. So you can see the death benefit is increased. So your net amount at risk stay the same. You can see here. So this is option B. Well, this one, if you want to uh, keep, you know, if I don't know what type of people or what type of situation you need to buy this constant increase, you know, that's a benefit. Usually that's benefit is stay the same, right? If you require the that's benefit increase, then you this that if option B death benefit is elected there. Uh we talk about this the net amount at risk will stay the same, remain the level stay the same. So option B requires great funding to keep the policy uh, in force with the option A. Uh, then the uh, then uh, option A. Of course, because your death benefit is increase, then you still keep uh, you know paying the money. So. Your I I guess your premium has to be you know increased constantly so to to choose the option B. So anyway, so this is the two different options of the universal life. It's very interesting. I think most of the people they use option A rather than B.